Hare Krishna. Let's start with our uh, reading on Science of self realization Chapter 8. Um, we are at this point, the highest love. Okay. Spiritual life means to be in association of the with the Supreme Lord and to exist in bliss and knowledge. Such eternal association means to play with Krishna, to dance and love with Krishna. Love Krishna or Krishna can become your child, whatever you like. Unless you can unless one can love Krishna, unless one finishes with love for cats, dogs, nations. Uh, country and society and instead concentrates his love on Krishna, there is no question of happiness. So when we talk of spiritual happiness, when we talk of eternal happiness, when we talk of multi, uh, permanent happiness, then it means that we are, uh, that we have achieved the, that is a state where, you know, one associates with Krishna and he personally interacts with Krishna. So that is the highest love. Okay. Uh, let me read few paragraphs and then you can read the next paragraphs. Mm -hmm. okay. if, if one protects the tender creeper of devotional service nicely, then gradually it will produce the fruit of unalloyed love for God. Unalloyed love for God means love that is not tinged by desire for material benefit, for mere philosophical understanding, nor for futile results. Unalloyed service to know that God is great. I am his part and parcel. Therefore, he is my supreme lovable object. Okay, I belong to him and therefore he belongs to me and I will love him. That is the consciousness. This consciousness is the highest perfection of human life and ultimate aim of all methods of self-realization. If one reaches this point, God is only my beloved. Krishna is only my lovable object. Then one's life is perfect. When one tastes that transcendental relationship with Krishna, then one feels a real happiness. The devotional creeper will then be so strong, so strongly protected that just by catching hold of it, one will be able to reach their supreme destination. If one climbs up steadily a tree, one eventually comes to the very top. Similarly, if one can achieve love of Godhead by catching that devotional creeper, there is no doubt that one will reach the transcendental abode of Krishna and will associate with him personally, just as we are associating here face to face. So devotional service will take us to Krishna. In the material world, Krishna keeps coming. Yada yada hi glanir bhavati bharata. And the spiritual world is always existing and pastimes are going on. So either in these two destinations, one will go when uh, his devotional service is really advanced. Right? So that is the goal of spiritual life, is to go back to Krishna. Okay? And there is where we will be completely happy. God is not fictional or imaginary. He is real as we are. See, interestingly, there uh, one person says that Everyone is looking for God and secretly they are thinking that we should not meet him. And the reason for that is that uh, uh, the reason for that is people are not knowing who is God and they just know few things that you know he is supreme he is he takes the complete judge of our activities so then if we think of such God, then we will be always fearful, right? So therefore, people are thinking that he may be imaginary or if he is there, then I don't want to see him. But I want to show myself I am religious. Hmm? Yeah, just hold on. This mental speculation is due to poor fund of knowledge. So, because of fund, uh, because of no knowledge about Lord Krishna, people have no conception of God. Hmm? 
or whatever the conception is very very small conception lord krishna and his abode exist and one can go there reach him and associate with him that is a fact spiritual life means to be in association with the supreme lord and to exist in bliss and knowledge eternally such eternal association means to play with krishna to dance with and love krishna or krishna can become your child whatever you like there are five primary relationship with krishna as a passive devotee as a servant as a friend as a parent and as a lover okay so this is a very important point here what happens in the spiritual world see uh, long time back we discussed about spiritual world i will um i will show it again this is the picture and we are in this universe and there are many many universes beyond this universe is karana ocean on which lord mahavishnu is there and this is our devotional creeper from here we chant hari krishna maha mantra and this devotional creeper takes us beyond brahma jyoti takes us to into the spiritual world including the vaikuntha planets and depending on our swarupa we associate with the lord in the particular dham If our sarupa is to serve Lord Ram, then we will reach Rayodhya. But if it is for Krishna, then we will reach Golok Vrinda. If it is for Narayan, then we will reach one of the Vaikuntha planets. If it is for Narasimha Dev, it will reach here. If it is for Matsa Avatar, it will reach here. For Kurma Avatar, for Vara Avatar, it will reach here. It's like that. So what happens in the spiritual world? People have no conception about it. but vedas they openly say what happens and when we hear about it we will get interested in it so in in the spiritual world there are five kinds of relationship one can have with krishna as a passive devotee he is devotee he loves krishna but passively passively they will serve like krishna's flute krishna's um you know flower animals very passive then as a servant as lord hanuman as a friend as arjuna and others you know sudama and all as a parent devaki and uh, and vasudev and nand maharaj and uh, uh, yashoda and as a lover lakshmi actually you know that conjugal has two parts in it one is where krishna is married one is where krishna is not married and the loving relationship is going on so in this case conjugal love is there the gopis those okay the cows in the krishna's abode are also liberated souls they are called surbi cows there are many popular pictures showing krishna loves the cows and how he embraces and kisses them that passive relationship with krishna is called shanta that their perfect happiness is achieved when krishna comes and simply touches them other devotees are inclined to actually give some service they want to give some service they think krishna wants to sit down i will arrange a place for him krishna wants to eat i will get some nice food and they actually make this arrangements other devotees play with krishna as friends on equal terms they do not know krishna is god to them krishna is their lovable friend and they cannot forget him for a moment all day and all night they think of krishna at night when they are sleeping they think oh in the morning i shall go and play with krishna and in the morning they go to krishna's house and stand by while krishna is decorated by his mother before going out to play with his friends in the field there is no other activities in krishna loka 
Krishna's abode. There is no industry, there is no rushing to office or any such nonsense. There is sufficient milk and butter, everyone eats plentifully. Krishna is very fond of his friends, sometimes he enjoys stealing butter for them. One can actually live this way and that is the perfection of existence. One should hanker for that perfectional stage of life. Krishna consciousness is a process to attain it. Okay. You want to read, continue reading? Prabhuji? Yes, sir, I can read. Okay, read. Yeah. But as long as one, one has even a slight attachment for this material world, one has to remain here. Krishna is very strict. He does not allow anyone to enter into his association who has any tinge of the material conception of life. Bhakti must be free from material contamination. Do not think, I am a very learned scholar. I shall find out what is the absolute truth by mental speculation. This is nonsense. One can go on and on speculating and will never find the sources source of all sources. It is said in the Brahma Samhita. One can go on speculating about the absolute truth for millions and millions of years. And still it, it will not be revealed. One can rot on this material world as he is and can go on speculating. But that is not the right process. Here is the process, Bhakti Yoga. Lord Chaitanya says that to render de devotional service to Krishna is the highest perfectional stage of life. And compared to these other things for which people are hankering in this material world are like bubbles in the ocean. Generally, people are after rewards and therefore they become religious. They say, I am a Hindu, I am a Christian, I am a Jew, I am a Muhammadan, I am this, I am that. And therefore, I cannot change my religion. I cannot accept Krishna. This is called a religious city dharma. Which, uh, sorry, with, with such a materialistic, uh, secret, uh, sectarian idea of religion, they will not, uh, they will rot in this material world, stuck to rituals and faith. They are under the impression that if they follow their religious principles, they will get material prosperity. Of course, if one sticks to any kind of re re uh, religious faith, he will get facilities for material life. Why do people want this material prosperity? Persons gratification. They are thinking, I shall have a very nice wife. I shall have a very good children. I shall have a very good post. I shall become president. I shall become prime minister. This is sense gratification. When when one is frustrated and has seen that to be rich or to attain the presidency cannot give him happiness. After squeezing out all the post of sex life, when he completely frustrated, then perhaps he takes to LSD and tries to become one with the void. But this nonsense can cannot give happiness. Here is happiness. One must approach Krishna. Otherwise, it will end in LSD confusion and roaming in impersonal wide concepts. People are frustrated. They must be frustrated if they do not have genuine spiritual life. Because a person is spiritual by nature. So, uh, so material propensities, material designations, these are actually obstacles in spiritual life. They don't take us anywhere. They, they put us down. Next, read. Read, read. Oh, sorry. Oh. I was, uh, so, how can uh, anyone be happy without Krishna? Suppose one is thrown into the ocean. How can he be happy there? That is not for us. One may be a very good swimmer. How long? Will he be able to swim? 
he eventually become tired and drowsy similarly we are spiritual by nature how can we be happy in this material world it is not possible but men are trying to remain here making so many temporary adjustments for survival this patchwork is not happiness if one really wants happiness here is the process one must attain love of godhead unless one can love krishna unless one finishes with love love for cats dogs country nation and society and instead concentrates his love on krishna there is no question of happiness rupa goswami has given a very nice example in this regard there are many drugs that saturate one with ideas or hallucinations <coughs> hallucinations but rupa goswami says that unless one tastes that final drug of love of god at krishna prema he will have to be captivated by meditation impersonal monism and so many other distractions chaitanya mahaprabhu describes that to attain an unalloyed love of krishna one has to execute devotional service or krishna consciousness one has to engage oneself exclusively in serving krishna the highest perfection perfectional stage of unalloyed devotion is to be free from all material desires all mental speculation and all creative activities the basic principle of unalloyed de- devotion is that one cannot maintain any desire other than to become fully krishna conscious even if one knows that all other forms of god are also krishna <coughs> one should not worship any other form but should concentrate on the krishna form krishna has many forms but one only has to worship krishna in his form with the flute as in the radha krishna beat simply concentrate on the on the form and all mental speculation and fruitive activities will fall away one has to cultivate krishna consciousness favorably and that means to execute service by which krishna becomes satisfied krishna consciousness is not attained by manufacturing one's own way i may think that i am doing something in krishna consciousness but who has sanctioned it for instance in bhagavad gita arjuna hesitated to fight for certain moral reasons but he was viewing the situation from the form of duty activities on which one has to enjoy or suffer the results he was considering that if he killed his family members he would then be subjected to many reactions this conclusion however was not sanctioned by krishna the law of action and reaction in the material world called karma but the devotional service transcends karma devotional service transcends karma we looked at this verse it is in 14 chapter i think 26th verse मामचो व्यविचारेण भक्ति योगिन सेवते स गुणान समीचा समातयता ब्रह्म भूया कल्पते वन हु एंगेज इन डिवोशन इज अल्फेलिंग इन ऑल सरकमस्टेंसेस एट वन ट्रांसेंड्स द मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर एंड दस कम्स टू द लेवल ऑफ ब्रह्म सो व्हेन वी आर प्रैक्टिसिंग डिवोशन वी आर स्लोली ट्रांसेंडिंग ऑल द मोड्स एंड व्हेन इट बिकम्स प्योर डिवोशन सर्विस देन वी हैव ट्रांसेंडेड एवरीथिंग गो अहेड Unalloyed love must be free uh, of all tinges of fruitive activities, karma, and all tinges uh, of mental speculation and material desire. That unalloyed devotional service should be favorably fixed on Krishna. Favorably means in accordance with what he desires. Krishna desired that the battle of Kurukshetra take place. It was all arranged by him. Arjuna was told. you are thinking in your way in your in your own way but even if you do not fight just assure that because it happened uh, it has been uh, because it has been arranged by me none of these warriors who are assembled here are going back to their homes they will be killed here it has already been arranged god's desire is such that one cannot change it 
Krishna has two qualities. He can protect and he can also kill. If he wants to kill someone, there is no power in the world that can protect him. And if he protects someone, there is no power in the world that uh, can kill him. Krishna's desire is supreme. Therefore, we have to devoid dovetile our desires with Krishna's. Whatever Krishna desires, no one can make null and void because he is the Supreme Lord. Therefore, our duty is to devotee our acts with Krishna's desire, not to manufacture an action and then declare, I am doing this action in Krishna consciousness. Now, we have to be very careful to ascertain whether Krishna actually wants it. Such authorized knowledge is instructed by the representative of Krishna. In our prayers of praise to the spiritual master, we are singing daily. If the spiritual master is satisfied, then God will be satisfied. And if one dissatisfies his spiritual master, then there is no way for him to please God. Therefore, as far as possible, one has to execute in order in order of one spiritual master that will be that will enable ones to uh, one to progress that is the essence of the favorable execution of krishna consciousness in my old age i have to i have come to america and i am trying to teach krishna consciousness because my spiritual master gave me an order that i must do it it is my duty i do not know whether i shall be a success or failure it doesn't matter my duty is completed if I if I can present before you whatever I have heard from my spiritual master. This is called uh, the favorable execution of Krishna consciousness. So, Those who, so yeah. here, you know, Prabhupada gives the key to advancement in Krishna consciousness. See, in our spiritual life, how we will advance? If we take the instruction of a spiritual master as our life and soul, that is the way we will advance. Whether they will be success or failure, it doesn't matter to us. But we will just continue doing that. We won't give it up. So, this answer Prabhupada gave through his own life. And as we progress, this answer will remain the same. There is no different answer than this. Go ahead. Okay. So those who are actually serious uh, should take the order of Krishna through, uh, through the representative of Krishna as their entire life and soul. One who sticks to this principle is principle is sure, sure to progress. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke in that way. And my spiritual master used to say, the spiritual master is the transparent medium. For example, I can see the letters of this book very nicely through these transparent eyeglasses, without which I cannot see because my eyes are defective. Similarly, our senses are all defective. We cannot see God with these eyes. We cannot hear Hare Krishna with these ears. We cannot do anything without the medium of the spiritual master. Just as a defective eye cannot see without the medium of spectacles, so one cannot approach the Supreme Lord without the transparent medium of the Supreme Master. The transparent means that the medium must be free of contamination. If it is transparent, one can see through it. <coughs> In unalloyed love of Godhead, we have to engage our senses. Sarvendriya, all the senses. This means that sex is also to be engaged in Krishna consciousness. The conception of God as a father or mother does not allow the engagement of one's sex in the service of the Lord because there is no sexual relationship with the father and mother. But in the conception of God as a lover, there is a sexual engagement also. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the most perfect inf information of our engagement with the Supreme Lord. 
in other religious conception of conceptions of life god is at the utmost taken as the father or mother many worshipers in india take the goddess kali to be the representation of god of course that is not sanctioned but uh, the belief is there and also in the christian religion the conception of god is as a father but chaitanya mahaprabhu informs us that one can even have sexual engagement with the lord this information is chaitanya mahaprabhu's unique contribution in this material world sexual engagement is considered to be the highest engagement a great pleasure although it's it exists only in a uh, perverted form no one however has conceived that there can be a sexual uh, engagement in the spiritual spiritual world there is not a single instance of uh, such theology anywhere in the entire world this information is given for the first time by chaitanya mahaprabhu one can have the uh, one can have the supreme personality of god as one's husband as one's lover this is possible in the worship of radha and krishna but no one especially the impersonalist can understand radha krishna the impersonalist have no idea they can even conceive that god as form but chaitanya mahaprabhu says that not only does god have form but he has sex life also this is the highest contribution of chaitanya mahaprabhu okay okay any question on this point god has sex life any any question on that what is your thoughts yeah this is this uh, paragraph <laughs> i'm reading first time prabhu ji so like yeah so maybe chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, uh what he is saying is like if i understand correctly so it's a pure love uh, it's not a material sex life but it's a uh, spiritual okay uh, so yeah. according to you in that spiritual sex life yes. what what all could be happening uh, i it, it is like a, uh the love love relationship between radha and krishna and uh, uh the mother and father relationship no this is this is bit, this is the conjugal love yeah this is conjugal love as one's mm-hmm. husband or as one lover mhm okay mhm so what all could be happening and what all could not be happening uh, okay so like um maybe uh, krishna can serve uh, radha as his uh, lover and uh, or um, yeah yeah like that yes 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 so, so both uh, both ways i in radha the the, the loving the so called love love life that we see in this world is actually a perverted one yes it's a bad reflection but some part of it is also true it is yes. not like completely wrong or completely bad okay it is it is perverted so some part of it is true so some some things are common and some things don't happen yes so common is you know this dancing embracing kissing touching these happen but the sexual intercourse doesn't happen this is very much only for the material world hmm now why sexual intercourse is only for the material world if you think like that why because uh, god like uh, krishna is a supreme lord hmm. so he is any part he uh, can behave like any any other part for example he can eat That's with fine. Is, yes that is one point yeah any other point that you think of uh okay so uh, this in, uh, only material world uh, has this intercourse uh, that is to uh, generate like uh, yeah that is to generate yeah. population yes population yeah in spiritual world you don't have to do that yes okay 
So that's the mm -hmm. only thing that is not there between here and there. Yeah. So when we talk about sex life, God's sex life, this thing is not there. Sexual intercourse is not there. But touching, embracing, kissing, dancing, singing, these are there. Yeah, but uh, like uh, so but half. There is a difference between that touch and the touch over here. What is the difference? What do you think could be the difference? Uh, here, uh, material world touch will be like uh, it's like a material world touch can be it it, 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 it the it's a sexual desire like uh, mainly the intention is to have intercourse and all those things. Whereas in spiritual world, it may not be. Uh, and uh, okay, so so you know this, um, the 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 touch, the embrace, the kissing here in this material world, is is inspired to enjoy. I want to enjoy. Yes. In the spiritual world, it is to give enjoyment to Krishna. That is the attitude. Mm. So here the attitude is to take, but there the attitude is to give. Yes. And and second thing is, if one is not satisfied in this world, uh, uh, sorry, in this material world, sexual intercourse doesn't satisfy us. Mm. But in the spiritual world, it is very satisfying. Not sexual intercourse, but the loving relationship. Yes, yes. Even in a fight, even in an argument, it is very loving. Okay. Okay. Bro. Yeah. So uh, details of it uh, is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. And if in you read uh, Krishna in, in book. Canto. In 10th canto. 10th canto. Yes. Uh, tenth canto is there. But if you read Krishna book, uh, it has all this information. Yeah, 90 so, chapters are there and various rasas are there. The five rasas that we talked, right? All of those rasas and examples are there. Yeah, so uh, to uh, one one who get uh, that elevation of the bhakti, that uh, prema rasa, whatever, so they only can understand this. Uh, so otherwise, uh, normal people, if they read this one, uh, they may think that okay, God is also like us, like that. So no, uh, they have to read it with acharyas yeah. commentaries, with acharyas purports. They can read. There is no problem. But they have to read with Acharya's purports. And they have to understand this Srimad Bhagavatam from Canto 1, not directly yes. from Canto 10. Yes, yes. yes and even is... if they want to understand Canto 10 directly, then they should buy Prabhupada's Krishna book. Because yes, Prabhupada yes, yes. has made sure that even though you may start with Canto 10, he will make sure that whatever is there before that is there to make you understand. And even Krishna book should be started from chapter 1. Should not be chapter... Uh, there is this chapter, right? Um, Rasa dance. 29 chapter. Some people directly jump to this this chapter. Yes, yes. This five yes. chapters they jump. So, somebody who is interested to know about Krishna should first read Bhagavad Gita. Okay. And then they should take and read Krishna book and they can start from chapter 1. They should not start from chapter 29. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> Krishna book is there to distribute. We should distribute Krishna book. Even though it is the 10th canto. But it is written by Prabhupada. And it is, it is he has put his potency in it. That one will not be deviated. One will get the complete understanding. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, there is no need to fear. Give them the right book is very important. Okay. okay. Let's go ahead. One can serve the Supreme One Lord. One can serve the Supreme Lord in various relationships. But in the material world, those relationships exist only as perverted reflections. What is our engagement in relationship to this material world? What are our ideas of society, friendship and love? They are all based on the material conception of life. In our society, someone is engaged as a father or mother or a son or mother to a son and others are engaged as husband and wife. 
flower and beloved there are other rasas relationships also such as to be engaged with uh, another as an enemy there are 12 different relationships out of which five are predominant the other seven are indirect uh, relationships such as for example to be someone's enemy there is usually a relationship between enemies even between a murderer and the one he murders as far as our relationship with krishna is concerned however even if one establishes a relationship as his enemy then his uh, life is successful therefore one uh, when one engages his senses with krishna a relationship can be established in one of 12 different varieties of of which five varieties are direct and seven are indirect when krishna appeared uh, in the arena of kamsa there were many big wrestlers prepared to kill him in fact he was invited to be uh, invited there to be killed his enemy kamsa thought soon the boys will come we have tried uh, we have tried for 16 years to kill them but that boy krishna could not be killed but now i have invited him as a guest and when he arrives he will fight with these wrestlers and they will kill him the demonic or atheistic people atheistic people are always thinking of krishna or god in terms of killing him therefore they present their uh, their theories that god is dead they think that uh, if god becomes dead then there will uh, they will be free to act however they please but as far as their actual activities are concerned god may be dead or alive but god's agent the material energy is so strong that no one can freely do any wrong as soon as uh, anyone does something wrong uh, there is immediate punishment it does not require the presence of god god may be dead or alive but the material energy is sufficient to punish anyone who violates the material laws even to slightest degree god has set these conditions but foolish people do not understand lord chaitanya however speaks of uh, favorably engaging all senses in the service of krishna in pure devotional life one should favorably engage one senses and should do whatever krishna wants yet even if one engages one senses against the will of krishna but still thinks of krishna that is also advantageous the demon putana for example thought of killing krishna just as the occupation of godly persons is to serve god so the demons and uh, atheists are always prepared to kill god putana thought i shall kill krishna he is only a child this is another mistake of demonic demonia i think krishna or god to be an ordinary child child or man so in this way putana was thinking let me smear my breast with poison and when the child goes to suck my milk he will die as we study this we see that she approached krishna as his enemy uh krishna as his enemy okay as we study this we see that uh, she approached krishna as his enemy uh and uh, yet he accepted her as a friend because uh, he is so merciful he didn't uh, take the demoniac portion of her mentality but he accepted her every living entity is conditioned but krishna is not a doctor or psychiatrist uh treats mad men but he does not become mad sometimes a patient may be may become angry with him or call him ill names but the doctor is sober and uh, simply treats him similarly if someone regards krishna as his enemy krishna does not become his enemy putana came to poison krishna but he took it otherwise he thought i have sucked her breast milk therefore she has become my mother krishna treated uh, her as his mother 
and therefore she became liberated to the same poison, uh, same position as Krishna's real mother Yashoda. The conclusion is that the highest perfection is to establish a favorable relationship with Krishna. But even if one engages himself unfavorably, Krishna is so merciful that he at least gives one salvation. All the enemies killed by Krishna were immediately liberated. Yeah, yeah just hold on. So, um, in Brahma Samhita, there's a particular verse that I want to show. So, generally, we have to approach Krishna with favor, favorable reasons. Hmm? Um, so generally we have to approach Krishna by favorable reasons but even with for unfavorable reasons also Krishna will accept it so when Acharyas explain they explain that we should be favorable to Krishna for Krishna's pleasure but Krishna is independent um, he he can take care of everything so anybody who is approaching him um, with different different reasons still he is able to uh, hear Wrath. Okay. This is the verse. Yam krodha kama sahaja pranayad bhiti vatsalya moha guru gaurava seva bhavai sanchint tasya sadisham tanu apurete govinda madhipurusham tamaham vajam. I adore the primeval Lord Govinda, the meditators of whom by meditating upon him. So there are these demons who are meditating upon him under the sway of wrath. Wrath means anger. Amara's passion. The gopis. Natural friendly love. Fear, the demons, parental affection, delusion, reverence and willingly service attain to the voluntary forms befitting the nature of their contemplation. There are some more details here, but, but where, what I am saying is, when Prabhupada says that, even if they engage with him unfavorably, Krishna is very merciful. And this is the verse. Unfavorably also if they approach. But our Acharyas have said that we should approach favorably. Yes. Anukulena. Anukul. Not Pratikul. Anukul. Okay. okay. But demons, they have, they have also got benefit. By either merging or in some rare cases, this Putuna got direct entry into spiritual world. So, because Krishna has so much respect for motherhood, na, even a demon who comes with motherly affection, Krishna will promote her. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we have time. So, let's continue. Okay. So, two classes of men. Oh, two classes. Okay. Two classes of men may merge into impersonal Brahman Jyoti. Brahma Jyoti. Those who are in, uh, intentionally as aspiring to merge into the impersonal Brahma Jyoti may enter. And those who are enemies of Krishna and are killed by him may also do so. Therefore, the de devotee concludes, why should I accept a condition that, that is offered even to God's enemies? So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recommends a pure de devotional service. There should be no desire to fulfill one's own material desires. There should be no attempt to understand Krishna by experimental philosophy. And there should be no fruitive activities to derive material benefits from Krishna. The only desire should be to serve him favorably as yeah. he desires. So favorably is what our service should be. Yes. Okay. So from our side, we should be favorable. 
but hmm. from krishna's point of view he can tolerate everything okay yes. he can tolerate he can make that situation favorable for himself he will enjoy that unfavorable situation can you think of any example uh, i will give uh, you an example you know sometimes children fight with father yes they they do you know wrestling with father yes sometimes we see mother saying no no don't do like that but father mm-hmm. is enjoying or not yes 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 bro yeah so so, one example so is... the vedas are like the mother and they tell approach the father favorably but yes. say if the child is very adamant and you know very childish and they will approach the father not favorably still the father has the capacity to enjoy that unfavorable situation agreed yes bro so this is what happens with krishna so uh, one example is uh, uh, indra indra when like uh, during gordana past time so krishna enjoyed uh, that <coughs> and krishna didn't punish uh, indra yeah so that way like that yeah even with the wrestlers and all that you know so yeah. like like that it is go ahead so if krishna wants something then we should do it suppose i were to ask a disciple my dear student please give me a glass of water it is then his duty to give me a glass of water if he thinks propada wants a glass of water but why not uh, give him something better why not a glass of hot milk that is not service in his consideration hot milk is very palatable and uh, is better than water yet because i have asked for water he has to give me water not milk that is favorable service one has to understand what krishna wants when there is uh, there is that intimate relationship then one can serve krishna most favorably and as long as there is not that intimate relationship one must take information of what krishna wants through the transparent medium of the spiritual master the vaishnava never thinks that he has a direct relationship with krishna lord chaitanya says i am the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant a hundred times the servant of the servant of krishna we have to agree to become a, uh, become the servant of servant of the servant this is the process of disciplic succession and if one wants real transcendental love of god then he has to adopt this process because people do not accept this process they do not develop real love of god they speak of god but actually they do not love god but there is no cultivation of pure devotional service they love god okay so here you know prabhupada is giving another very very uh, important fundamental message to advance in spiritual life first thing is spiritual life doesn't mean that we have to become the master we have to actually become the servant of another servant and he is a servant of another servant like that 100 times removed yes sir so that is the thing and second thing is we should develop real love of god real love of god means not just speaking about god but ready to do everything into god in the mood of servant of the servant and not offending devotees this is very important this answer remains till you know will just go on even after mm-hmm. 10 years of krishna consciousness this answer will still remain <coughs> won't change and this yes. is the key so one should keep this in mind always i have to become the servant of the servant not the master of the master and i have to develop real love of god in i should not be interested in politics in fight fault finding in criticizing devotees i should be ready to serve devotees in whatever capacity i can and i should chant the holy name with sincerity with strictness with attention 
so when we have that kind of motive then one will develop real love of god otherwise one will just show bottle you know show bottle in devotional service they will just, where internally they don't have any substance but externally they may be very good speakers and all that okay <coughs> let's go ahead we, we may say love of god but unless we adopt this principle they will uh, have to love dog not god that is the mistake chaitanya mahaprabhu says that if one really wants uh, love of god then one has to follow the process of pure devotional service it is not that uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu is speaking out of his own mental concussion concoction his statements are confirmed in vedic scriptures such as the narad pancharatra and the srimad bhagavatam these two books and the bhagavad gita are very authentic scriptures meant for de- devotees chaitanya mahaprabhu quotes from a verse in the narada pancharatra rishikesha rishikesha sevanam bhakti uchyate this is the definition of pure devotional service rishikesha rishikena rishikesha sevanam rishikena means by one's senses we have to engage our senses it is not that we engage our uh, it is not that we engage only our minds if someone says i am always thinking of krishna that is not pure devotional service meditation is thinking but uh, no one thinks of krishna they think of void or something impossible if someone is thinking of krishna or narayana or vishnu as prescribed in the vedic scriptures that is real yoga yoga meditation means no focus one's mind upon the super soul the super soul is the representation of krishna in the form of four handed narayana even patanjali uh, and authority uh, on the yoga system prescribes meditation on vishnu but uh, just as people are manufacturing bogus religious processes the so called yogis of today have manufactured their own way of thinking of some or something void but uh, the narada pancharatra says rishikena rishikesha sevana one must engage not only one's mind but one's senses <coughs> engage the senses in the service of the master of the senses these three sanskrit words are very significant Vishikesha means the Lord of the senses. So Bhakti Yoga means to serve with the senses of the Lord of the senses. The Lord of the senses is Krishna. We should always remember that we have our senses because we wanted to enjoy the, this material world. And therefore the Lord has given us a particular set of senses for our enjoyment. The hog has a particular type of body and senses because he wanted to enjoy uh eating to stool similarly a man has a particular type of body and sense because he wanted to enjoy something else <coughs> we have a particular set of condition and senses with which to enjoy this material world and this is what uh, we have to purify our senses are original but now they are covered by material desires we have to cure ourselves and become free from such desires when one senses are no longer inclined toward material uh, sense gratification uh, one's status is called pure devotion yeah just stop uh, in the 15th chapter of bhagavad gita krishna talks about this yeah the living entity thus takes another gross body obtains a certain type of ear eye tongue nose and sense of touch which are grouped about the mind it does enjoy a particular set of sense objects just like proper the saying hog body man body animal body tree body this is just to enjoy that particular desire that particular soul has okay so uh, we have one minute left any questions or comments uh one question prabhu so uh, yeah. this is one uh, one paragraph uh, earlier previous paragraph that uh, uh, criticizing a devotee uh, or some devotees uh, it comes under offenses then offenses right right and uh, uh, there is another offense one of the offenses uh, um, okay 
So one of the offenses, uh, atheist, I mean, instructing an atheist or uh, yeah. argument with the atheist also, atheist also uh, that is telling about the God mm -hmm. is also an offense. Yes. So I, I don't know whether we discussed this earlier or I don't know, but uh, just like uh, how maybe briefly we can discuss otherwise. Okay. Okay, so I'll explain what it means to so the to instruct a faithless person to instruct a faithless person in in the details of Krishna consciousness. This is the offense. So um, Krishna says this in Bhagavad Gita also. 18th chapter. This confidential knowledge is can never be explained to those who are not austere, devoted, or engaged in devotional service, nor to one who is envious of me. Okay, so in this purport, we will read the purport and Prabhupada will explain. See, there is no possibility of faithless people understanding Bhagavad Gita and Krishna. So, therefore, we should not tell them about it. Okay. Um, uh, but my, my question was like, uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, so, if we tell uh, about Krishna, but they may or may not become a devotee. Yeah. But so, it may yeah. help, it so may help somewhere you. Prabhupada explains, devotee yeah. is more merciful than Krishna. Yes. And he takes the risk. Yes. to approach you know new person he takes the risk to approach new person to to give krishna yes okay if if the person becomes envious angry the devotee steps back Okay, he steps back. He doesn't yeah. do any much. Yeah. 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 Basically, yeah. we should not argue. Um, yeah. If we come to know that he's not going to take, then we step back or we don't approach him at all. Yes. But because we don't know at the first time what is going to happen, so we take the risk. Yes. We do book distribution. We take the risk. Yes. yes Later, yes. we come to know oh, that was very bad. Then we just don't approach him. We may yes. try different strategies like prasad. Yes. If that also doesn't work, then we just don't approach him. We respect him at a distance. We don't go near him. So that is the detail of this instruction. Yeah. yeah at the at start, yeah. we don't know whether a person is faithless or not. So we take the risk. Once we come to know he has no faith, then we decide whether to continue associating with him or not to continue. Right? Depending yeah. on his faith. Yes. So this is what it means. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, this is the last session for this no, week? No, or? no, no. we'll continue. We'll continue. Next week also we'll continue. But uh, there is one uh, test, right? Uh, like six yeah, yeah, test you prepare. We have okay. still complete, uh, we have still not finished na, the reading. Yeah, yeah. So, we will continue. Till we finish the reading, we'll continue. Okay. Hmm? Okay, bro. Yeah. Okay.